welcome to Alternative Microbiology. Today we are going to learn how to do cross matching. There are actually two methods of doing cross matching. One of them is by uh, agglutination reaction between the two blood groups. If there's agglutination, it simply means that they are incompatible. If there's a smooth mixture between the serum and the red cells of the donor's blood and the acceptable blood respectively, it simply means that all things can, the blood transfusion can commence. The other method is through microscopy, so we're going to use it at the same time to use this um, video to try and capture both methods. But um, now the first part of it is that I'm going to be having a blood with me, but I'm using it as a demonstration. This is just like um, how your blood is going to look like in a blood bag, looking like this. But the only difference between these and this is that it comes with a, a long um, capillary pipe that is later converted to a tonic cage where we use to put up our blood samples. Uh, something like this, it's an example. So, the first part, when you collect your blood sample from your patient, you put it in an EDTA bottle. It comes with a green cap, something like this. So what we have is an example of a donor's blood, rather an acceptor blood. So, one of the basic uh, things you must know as a lab technician is what blood type is compatible to uh, other blood types. So the donor's blood has a compatibility, must have compatibility with the acceptor's blood. The acceptor's blood must be able to react well with the donor's blood. So for all the bloods we have, the first rule is that positive blood can only be transferred with a positive blood. And negative, red source negative blood can only be transfused with a red source negative blood. That's the first part. The blood of the donor, is it red source positive or red source negative? If it is red source positive, simply means that the blood you are ordering from from the blood bag should also have red source positive. If it's a red source negative acceptor, simply means that the blood that you are requesting should be a red source negative. When that part is, is, is known, you must know two things. You have a general acceptor and a general donor. So a general donor is the O blood. If it's an, if the donor is going to be a positive donor, the blood must be O blood. And this O blood is called a general, the general donor. So no matter what blood group is there, as soon as, you are, as, soon as the blood group is a positive, a resource positive blood group, the O positive will definitely give. But this doesn't rule out cross matching. We still need to do cross matching due to a whole lot of factors which I will explain later in the video. Now, if the sample is a red source negative, simply means that an O negative donor is required for a general. So the bottom line is, despite the fact that a whole blood is a general donor, it must have the same red source factor as that of the acceptor's blood. Now, we have a general acceptor. That's an AB. An AB is a blood that has antigens of both A and B. So it can accept whatever blood given to it. AB, A, A blood, B blood, O blood. But it must have the same resource factor. In other words, AB positive can only accept from a positive. Why? An AB negative can only accept from a negative. But note, AB can never give blood. It is not a blood giver. It is only an acceptor. Same also for O. O can never accept blood. Accept from itself, which is the O. But it can always give to all of them. Likewise, AB, as I've said before, they can accept from everybody, but they can only give to themselves. So they call them the stingy blood type, as the case may be. So like I said at the initial part, this will act as my blood for today. You already come to the lab. So the first is first, you must make sure you're with your lab coat. Very important. You swap your, your hand gloves on your hands, and make sure that your lab coat is nodded to the top to avoid spillage of blood on your workwear. So the first part when you want to do your blood work is that once you get the blood on the blood bank, it is important to confirm the blood type. 
let's spike the old labor in. Tell you where you are getting your blood from outside your clinic or outside an, an external blood bank. You make sure that you confirm the blood group written in the label and make sure your blood is labeled. If it's not labeled, you are expected to reject the sample. I mean, it's, you have to reject that sample. Make sure it's labeled. And in that label, they tell you that they, they show all the tests that has been run, the screening tests, your HIV, your hepatitis, your um, uh, HIV sub, your hepatitis, your VDRL, your um, hepatitis B, C, and what have you. So in some countries, they go as far as screening for malaria and typhoid. So you make sure that these things are written down and your blood bag has a number which is also stated in the form, the test form of the patient. Once this is noted, as a technician, given that this was not done by you, you are expected, in case whereby there is time to spare, if it's not much of an emergency, to re cross check this screening or the label. Simply means we run a screen so that you certify the blood sample in front of you. At that point, there will be no room for error whatsoever. So once you have that with you, after your screen and all that, you screen this blood. Initially, you already screen the blood. The, what you have to do with the donor, with the acceptor's blood, is just to know what the blood group is, which will enable you to know the donor's blood that you are required to get. After that, you do what we now call you now collect blood from your blood bag. So how do you collect blood from the blood bag? Like I said, this one has a very long um, pipe attached to it, a light a pipe, which is later converted to uh, tourniquet. Once it has a needle, which is hot. So by the time you unwrap it, it's going to be rolled around the blood. By the time you unwrap it from the blood, you take it, let it for space up, so that it doesn't pour around. So you place it up, and you place your blood at the wall of your sink. Place on the wall of your sink. The long part of it, you take it to uh, a little bottle. A bottle. You open this, and you place the pipe on it. But before all this, you must get yourself the scissors. The scissors. Now, once you cut, once you cut the pipe, get ready that the capillary outcome is going to move upwards, because the pipe itself is knotted somewhere around the edges. So that it stops the blood from flowing between here and to the outer part of the pipe. So you will get ready to, to lift it up. That's your capillary um, uh, tube now. To lift it up so that it doesn't spill on you. So by the time you cut it, you lift it up. You notice that the blood wants to go, but because it's lifted up, you now come back downwards by capillary action. Once that occur, make sure that by then your MTDT bottle is already open. So that you just bring it, place it, and then apply pressure on the blood bag. So apply pressure, the blood will flow into the little bottle. Just get a, a good number of notes, at least from three to five notes. And just a little bit of gauge, just close to the top, then you are done. Then you keep it, then you tie. Allow the blood flow back, let there be a space, tight so that they can be let them be let tight let it be a middle let your knot be in between the edge the ending of your the pipe so that, that way the blood will no longer flow okay. then you keep and you freeze it until you are done with your uh, cross machine now and again in some cases you may want to turn away some blood you may want to throw away some blood given that maybe the some of them is clotted at the top so you may just cut it instead of putting the table bottle, you can just turn it on the sink and press so that this first part goes out. In some blood samples that comes in, the serum may the doctor may require you the whole blood. So it may require you reducing the serum, but it doesn't really really matter. The important thing is that if your blood comes in and it's already started settling, mix it up properly before you start your cross machine. So I've collected your blood sample. We are assuming that one of these is our donor's blood, one of these is our acceptor's blood. For this is from a patient, and this one is from uh, one of our staffs. Now this one, the, the one from our patient is B positive. The one from our staff is an O positive blood. Under the circumstances, we have gotten the first part of the, of the, of the reaction. They are both resource positive, so they can 
they have that factor of colliding together. And again, we're using the general donor, which is now your B positive. Sorry, your O positive is the general donor, which can easily go into your B positive. We'll see how to do the cross matching. So how do we do our cross matching? We're going to need a test tube. Test tube. We're going to need a normal saline. We need a swab. Continue. So I'm going to prep up, and we are going to get done with this, and uh, I'll meet you, and we'll continue from where we are. Thank you.